Hunter X Hunter episode 60. I turn in, I should. Ah, Fatty, I'm a one point each of you, she did. She goes to the corner. Are we losing a member of our cast again? They just cannot stay together for the life of them. Crap, you're a shit. Oh, yeah, I mean, they say any meat and with the poor melodies been there the whole time. This is sweet from Lirio, too. Way ahead of you, Lirio. Oh, <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, we all love Leorio. All my homies love Leorio. He's just got that doctor heartbeat. It's sweet, but there's something oddly insulting to me about Melody, of all people, telling Leorio he's not about this life. <laughs> like, come on. I mean, she is in the Mafia, so. Bye, Kurapika, I guess. I would love to see more Mafia stuff, but... I don't know if Gon and Kluwa would object to Kurapika leaving, really. They're in their own place. That feels more like a Kurapika thing than a Gon and Kluwa thing, if you know what I mean. Always gotta be doing everything alone. Sometimes the real meaning of I don't want you to worry is I don't want you to notice. I don't want you to look. And X and X beginning. Yeah, new arc. New adventures. That is, that is a staggering amount of money. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Like, the whole, I don't want to burden you, sometimes it is, it's selfish, weirdly. Yeah, everyone's just abandoning us. Zepal's a G. He's a real one. Kun's like, oh yeah, my hunter license. Oh, but what is money to us on this journey? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, oh, how much is your life worth? What is the value of a human soul? About the hunter license thing and going and clue his approach to life. Ever since I sort of mused, like, what if you looked at life as having the risk or stakes of like an RPG? Or what if you were really in the mindset? that it was fun, let's say like interacting with a stranger, had the same stakes or same personal risk as it would like pressing X to talk to an NPC in a game. Ever since saying that, I've been kind of ruminating on it and I feel like it actually has improved my enjoyment of just my day-to-day, -day, even really mundane things. It's a really cool framework. I mean, it's, it's hard, it's tough. There's just so much resistance to that kind of freedom from just, you know, basic evolutionary social programming, trauma of things gone wrong and bad experiences, fear of looking weird, etc. But yeah, life really can be a playground. There's just so many weird, interesting, cool things that you would never expect. And sometimes all it takes is like contact, even very basic contact with a new person or a new environment. And the Hunter License is one of those things where the people who get it sort of need it the least in a certain sense. It's one of those areas where the Bible verse applies to those who have everything more will be given. With this kind of joyful experiential drive that I'm describing, it has a lot of potential to start scaling up because every new world that you enter branches off into other worlds. And there's also something magnetic about people who have that sort of joy joyful zeal and energy for life, which compounds it even further. I think that's one of the things that makes watching Gon and Clue so thrilling for me. There's just like 8 billion ways they could go, and all of them they would enjoy. You get the feeling, and I think realistically, that they're not really pressed about any one thing, because they just have so much going on. Their mobility is so in their hands. It continues to be a huge delight. It gives me energy. Now you're talking, that's a great idea. This guy's thinking. Spend the interest, not the principal. He only has 26 billion left. How will he ever survive? He's even more, that was one copy. <laughs> oh yes, eat the pain away. One of those things is way, way more interesting than the other. Turns out that all the Dragon Balls are contained in a copy of Greed Island. The Greed Island exam arc. <laughs> I'm surprised then is this open? I thought it was a well-guarded secret. I guess if you're in this room. Oh, there she is! Gon and Kluwa's future love interest. I guess that's a res partly to respect the Nen user's privacy, because, like, secrecy is such a big part of their powers. 
Whatever you do, do not accept binary options. There she is. Right, it's also to guard the exam. Don't just happy as a clam. This guy tests. Just like the hunter exam. Nah, they're dead. They died. <laughs> He's dead too. Please explain. Surprising. I think it's just that he's chill. He's just not pressed. Okay, so he's just I wonder about that sometimes. There's this really cool idea of survivorship bias, right? Which is that if you take a difficult thing, let's say there's a 5% chance of success and 100 people try it. Just statistically, five people will have it work out, but there's some psychological weirdness there because each of those five people will probably feel like their success was very deliberate and because of their actions and what they did. Like they'll attribute the success to themselves rather than just to like statistical probability that there were gonna be five people who succeeded one way or the other. And they'll like reverse engineer all the reasons why they're successful and why they made it. Simultaneously, people will assume that they succeeded because of their talent or skill and will seek them out for advice, but the fact that someone succeeded does not mean they actually know how to succeed or are correctly attributing the causes of their success. Quick example, there are a lot of people engaging in high-risk stock trading, and it will just happen that some people get phenomenally rich. They will feel like they knew what was going to happen with those stocks, that it was a result of their research and insight and their gut feeling or what have you, and they will feel equipped to give advice about stocks, and other people will feel willing to accept that advice because of the proof of result. And it's really difficult to know as either party in that scenario, whether the success was just luck or whether it was actual insight and skill. I think it's a good idea to keep in mind, but it can also be a little bit weakening because you start to question even the areas where you actually do have insight and skill. I often wonder about this myself. It's like, did I really understand the, the situation I was getting myself into? Did I really accurately use my gifts to make what I made? There's a positive element of that though, which is that when entering a new field, there's the Dunning-Kruger effect where you're new. So you don't understand the full range of the difficulty, complexity, depth, the risk, your own fallibility in the field. But actually that can be a really good thing because at least it gets you moving. It gets you into the thing. So you've now left the world of zero possibility and entered into a world of unknown, but greater than zero possibility, which is where like the magic happens. And then to the other half of that, you like use your wit or whatever as, as great as you can. And then like the result will be some mix of you and luck. There's a quote I heard that's related to this that I, I love, which is that fear is a, a mile wide and an inch deep, meaning that you're looking at something difficult and you're just looking at this vast body of water. But as soon as you step into it, you often realize you can stand in it and then you can keep walking in it. And before you know it, you've crossed it. And if it takes some ignorance of the reality of a situation or the risk of a situation to get you into the place where you're walking through the intimidating body of water, so much the better. Didn't expect this random guy in the crowds to be such the philosopher, Puhat. Interesting. There's that ignorance. Could work in his favor. Gotta step in the water. Well, it's not like anyone dies in the show. That is, that strikes me as being highly impractical advice. Or maybe just not suited to my personality. Boring. <laughs> Act now, figure it out later. It works for him. Hey, we rejected a binary choice. I'm I'm so proud. That was heartwarming. Glue will learn this in five minutes after thinking about it a bit. It must be so cool to live in the world of Nen. Like, there's so many things you've never seen before. Oh wow, that's impressive. He did that. He did that. But also, wasn't I saying it's not so much about the point you're at, but your rate of growth? Do you know who I am? 
Do you know who my family is? And Pokeball sounds. Hey, Puhat made it. I got my eyes on Puhat. Did he kick through a wall? That would make me so proud and so happy. He kicked through something. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Sure. Duh. I was never anxious at all. He literally punched a wall. He literally punched a wall. He is the master of punching walls and like destroying ground and all nature of structural damage. That is his Nen power. <laughs> Lyra is celebrating their victory by just drinking himself. He downed that, damn. Drank that faster than he ate that sandwich in the car. Yeah, standard waiver. We're not in it for the money. This is a bonus. Money just comes naturally as a side result, side effect of our actual goals. I'm looking for, for daddy. I think I missed it. Is Jinx still in the game? Or are we just doing this to get information to find him outside of the game? Get the hell out of here. Honestly, after all we've been through, <laughs> the medical school exam feels like a breeze. No one will kill you during the medical exam. No one will deceive you. Well, it's Hunter x Hunter. Trust nothing. I bet there's a whole separate medical system for NEN users, or for the extremely rich who can afford NEN users. Okay, this answers my question. Cool. That's kind of what I wanted. So that means Feitan and uh, Frankenstein. Was it Frankenstein? It was Feitan? No, the other guy. The blonde guy. But what do you start with? Extra skins? Weapons? He calls him Jing and not Dad. Solid. If he can control himself. This girl must be deadly, looking like that, but passing this test. This is so exciting. Oh, hi. It's the Velvet Room. What is it, like a bestiary? RPGs love bestiaries. Oh, that's the Pokemon cards in the intro. Damn, it's an RPG and Pokemon. It's your Pokedex. Okay. Okay. Only. Pretty sure this was a GF ability in Final Fantasy VIII. Okay, single use cards. Think so? But Nico needs to get in there and just do it. He'll learn it best that way, and so will I. Okay, full in inventory in each slot. Oh, it's... Oh, you're competing. I can see some conflict brewing there. And you can't do it again. A lot of rules. Gon's like, can I just go in? <laughs> the look on Gon's face. It was always gonna go this way. <laughs> There's more. <laughs> Me and Gon are the same kind of learner. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> well, me and Gon are just totally on the same page with this whole thing. I'm gonna learn everything about the game by playing it. Skip the tutorial! Oh, this is interesting. But I didn't want you to come. <laughs> Damn, Jing is the master of like carrot and stick. This is mind games. Glad you're here, but like, why did you bother? 
Ah, it's over? Come on. Come on. Yeah, you don't say. Thanks, narrator. I don't know why it didn't occur to me earlier. Candyland is Greed Island. Also, Jing made this game? <laughs> wow. Speaking of like having options and living a varied life in his spare time as one of his arcs, he just made this thing that everyone covets. Because why wouldn't you? Greed Island tutorial. It's starting to get, get why this is important. Admittedly, the whole Beast Jerry encyclopedia element of RPGs is, is my least favorite. I always skip that. But if it's essential for the game, that's different. What kind of crazy items, cards are we going to get? I mean, the sky's the limit, just like Nen. I'm also guessing you can kill each other in the game. And there are already reasons appearing why they would be competitive. Especially with how many people in this game and, you know, like a three, three item limit, what have you. Funny for all my talk about how life is a game and now we're like in a literal game. As if the author wasn't already channeling his love of RPGs enough. He just put them in an actual RPG. It's kind of great.